Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I woke up at 5.30 a.m. And that's not the end of the world, but here's the problem. Since I've been fasting and I don't eat until 5 p.m. in the daytime at all, all I get is coffee and water. For that reason, if you wake up an hour, two hours early on any given day, you have to suffer for two more hours. <laughs> It's usually not that bad till about three o'clock. That's when you start thinking about food. <laughs> okay, here's the clip. This is Andy Sheckman, who is one of my sponsors. He's he's from um, Miles uh, Franklin Gold. And before I show you this clip, you need to remember Miles Franklin Precious Metals. Use code DAI Gold. You email them or you call them. Info at milesfranklin.com or nine five two nine two nine seven zero zero six and you give them the code DAI Gold, that's to get the best prices. They, they uh, actually sent me an email and said that their best deal right now is on these one-fourth ounce gold American Eagle 2023s. So here's Andy Sheckman. This guy gets and this it. this comes back. He gets it, and he knows that this world we're going into is going to involve blockchain and gold. Listen to him. And this comes back to what I've been saying for the last four years. You use blockchain technology, and you peg something to it. You, everyone puts the same amount of something, whether that be gold, which the, the Bank of International Settlements reclassified as the world's only other tier one reserve asset, the only other one. I'm gonna talk about what's going on with gold in China right now too, but the only other tier one reserve asset, they will use gold or commodities, but I presume mostly gold, to peg to a new system. James Rickard had an interesting take on it. He said to me, if I were them, now for those of you who don't know James, by the way, and you're right, there, there will be, this is a system that has to be born out of cooperation. Uh, they cannot be an autocratic situation where it's from the top down. And no, they all have to have equal footing. And what James did say about the common currency, by the way, you know, he's a guy who's written best-selling books and was commissioned by the CIA to run, uh -oh. simulate uh, financial war games. Basically how you beat a country without firing a weapon and he said to me if i were the bricks this is what i would do he said i would peg each new brick to an ounce of gold dollar value the dollar value of an ounce of gold is what each brick currency unit would be he said that way they don't even have to hold quite as much of it of the gold but the theory with him is that these are the countries that produce and accumulate all the gold and if each brick trade unit is worth one ounce of gold we didn't get into the discussion of convertibility because I have my own feelings on that. But nonetheless, he said, if the West continues to inflate, which they're going to have to, we can go down the rabbit hole if you want about inflation and oil prices and all that stuff right now, as we get deeper into this, I have no time agenda tonight. But if they continue to inflate, the dollar goes down and gold goes up, the BRICS win. If, they, if the West tries to buy gold to compete with the BRICS, the dollar goes down, gold goes up, the brakes win so what james the mistake he made was by saying this would happen august 22nd both the combination of the seo and the eurasian economic union with bricks and the gold back announcement both will happen so i believe gold and xrp will win check this out now now this uh let me make sure everybody gives proper credit here this is from trumers only and he um the official cool guy the digital asset investor channel did this with Rob Cunningham, who has the cool show, all right? These guys were uh, the ones that were interviewing uh, Andy Shackman on that, on that show. Now, he mentioned Jim Rickards, who also said this on October 17th, 2018 on Twitter. People are saying, um, is not my idea of a, a reliable source. That said, even if the IMF needs devs, and I'm sure Ripple has some good devs, some good ones, that doesn't mean XRP will be a reserve asset. More likely, it's an ESDR, as in a basket of world reserve currencies. Or as Miguel Valles said, the simple goal was to make XRP a digital reserve, what did he call it? A digital reserve, a digital reserve currency, not the 
digital reserve currency. In other words, it could be a basket. All right. The proper party, the last batch of tickets for the proper party drops tomorrow, which is today. Okay. Um, today, yeah. 12 p.m. Eastern time is when Ripple's going to put out the final batch of tickets. So if you were still thinking about going, do it. I, I, I posted this because I was um, I was actually talking to the official cool guy, and he said that this picture always re like reminded him of when Michael Jordan did this after. And it's kind of like a, well, winning's what I do. You know, you put your hands up. What else do you want me to do? And there's also, if you remember this one, this was when Tom Brady, I think after they won the Super Bowl again, Tom Brady and then um, Rob Gronkowski, Gronk. Um, check this out. This is Ripple's booth at right in dead, folks, if I've seen, if I, if I really realize anything by now, Brad Garlinghouse is an alpha male he's kind of a cocky guy in a good kind of way and make no mistake you, you have to understand Masari was not inviting ripple to the party a lot of the same people around that that are like the main people that come to this conference every year for the last five years are the same people involved in ethgate last year brad garlinghouse goes and he gets to dunk uh ryan selkis this year he i mean if that's not establishing your dominance, I don't know what is. He's got the ripple thing up there. And by the way, right here, Danielle Dixon of Stellar's being interviewed. <laughs> so right beside her is the ripple booth. They're dead center. If that's not sending a message, I said, it's about sending a message. One of the, That's probably the, my favorite Batman, Batman movie ever, The Dark Knight. Um, and then we had this. Everybody on stage, all the people that wouldn't even speak about the Ripple case until we started uncovering ETHgate. Now, in each of these, this is from the Blockchain Association, in, e in each of these cases, Grayscale and Ripple, you're seeing judges all over the country express, express a healthy dose of skepticism to the SEC's arguments. That's Paul Graywall, General Counsel of Coinbase. Uh, and then this was a clip, you can't really make out what he's saying, I was just going to show you the clip just because it's the only video clip I've seen come out from the story of Brad Garlinghouse and Stuart Alderati. I didn't do that to be a regular. I don't know if it's Stuart Alderati, I'm not interested, but look, I, uh, I, we are going to continue to engage around the world, but you certainly were doing that last week, and it's what we find times at the end is into that. All right. Hit the pause button there. And then um, John Deaton was there, and he said at Mainnet, Brad Garlinghouse just said, "We're hiring in Dubai, we're hiring in London, we're hiring in Singapore." Now I ask you, do you feel protected? <laughs> and um, you know, the week before Masari, we were hearing all this bull about, "Oh, is, is Ripple going to abandon XRP? Well, they're using this and they're using that. Are they going to abandon XRP?" I mean, we <sighs> folks, I'm. I've been around, you know. That's from Sin of a Woman, one of the greatest Al Pacino movies ever. And if you've been around for a while, what kind of... I, I remember I, I saw that last week. I saw people acting, trying to float all these ideas and scare people. Oh, Ripple could ab abandon XRP. So yeah, you're going to spend $200 million on a, on a lawsuit in, in for th almost three years, still going on, with the SEC, you're going to spend that kind of money because at the end of it, you're going to abandon XRP? Does that make any sense in anybody out there's world? No, it doesn't. Yeah, you're sitting on, you're sitting on what is it? 40-something billion XRP. It's your largest asset that you have. It's, it's, it's the, it, it, it is the asset that you own, but you're just going to abandon. Ah, no, nah, we're not going to. We're just going to go on. Let's go on to Tether. We'll, we'll send that around. Come on. Don't insult my intelligence. Come on. Sometimes I see things on Twitter. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I, I, there's some, some, when I see those things, I'm sitting there thinking, man, I have got to start mass producing these igloos in South Georgia. Because if these people are this stupid... If there's people stupid enough to believe that Ripple's going to abandon XRP, then 
they would buy my my melt twenty four hour meltable igloos in mass. I mean, come on. All right. This is a picture of Brad Garlinghouse with uh, this guy who, um, let's see what his deal is. He follows me. Um, I don't know, I don't know what his name is, but Ingrid. But anyway, this is one of the pictures I saw of Brad Garlinghouse. Then here's another one. Um, these are, this is one, these are some stellar guys it looks like, I think. Unless Stellar just bought the the, the uh, tags for the, some people sponsor the, the the name tags, so they get their logo on that as part of these things. Maybe they sponsored it. I don't know. There's the Ripple booth in the background, um, and then here is uh, Danielle Dixon from Stellar there at Mainnet. Right. Uh, I mean, it's just one of those things that, you know, the infrastructure that exists today for payments and just like in the traditional infrastructure globally is very fractured. And it's because it's usually based on the walls of a border, right? The border, it makes it hard. You don't have the same software. You don't have the same hardware. You don't have everything transferring. What blockchain can do is it can make it super easy. And it does do. It makes right. it super easy for this global transfer of value. And when you think about really trying to bridge this like global world and make it so that everybody has access to, to not only just to payments and remittances, but to the technology stack that makes it simple. So one of the things that blockchain does is creates that borderless world for technology and for the value transfer. And then all these applications that can build on it locally changes the framework for payments. It means that we're not just seeing companies build in the US. It means you can see companies build locally and they can solve their local problems rather than the US telling them what their local problems are, right. which is historically how it's happened. Uh, I mean, it's just one of those. All righty. Uh, moving along. Uh-oh. Gary Gensler popped his little head out uh, yesterday. And um, I decided I would add to what he was saying because he's a walking contradiction. You can't, if, if you're going to act like you're, you're all about these securities laws where it applies to crypto, you can't ignore Ethereum and act like you're really try, interested in protecting people. And so... Let's illustrate the absurdity of Gary Gensler. Investors benefit from laws against fraud and manipulation and, and other. And by the way, folks, this guy looks and talks like a guy. I'm, I'm telling you, you write this down. I Look, we're all human, okay? And I don't care what Gary Gensler thinks he's done for his handlers in the past. I don't care who he has worked for. The this it's it's this guy against the literal world. I mean, and one human being and one human being's constitution, even their body physically, can only hold up to so much, folks. And this guy looks like holes are are popping up in and He's getting weak and, and frail acting and literally um, the confidence has been sucked out of him. And, and normally I would feel sorry for a human being in that situation, but this guy's earned every ounce of it and I don't feel sorry for him. He deserves everything he gets because everything he has, has, has been doing is anti-American, driving American businesses offshore instead of sitting down and, and having on, honest conversations with him instead of playing gotcha. He deserves everything he's getting and this country needs nobody like this in any position of power in this country. These people either need to be in prison or, or in, I mean, he doesn't need to have any power over anyone. It is unbelievable. It is so scary for the future of our children to think that these people have any power and can progress in any field. It's sick. And if it's if nothing's done about it, we don't have a country anymore. Watch this absurdity. Um, conflicts in the markets. And we've just seen so many people hurt and lost their money. And by the way, nobody, I don't have one ounce of a problem. If you're finding fraudsters and hucksters, go after them. They deserve to be gone after. But that's not what they're doing. They're going after they're going after people like Ripple that try to sit down and meet with them. People like Coinbase that sit there and meet with them. And say, look, we don't want it. We want to, we want to list this. We want to know your thoughts. What is this okay? Is it not okay? And and then they sue them later and don't give them any answers. Th these are 
the huckster is talking right now. Hoping for a better future. And there's so many hucksters and fraudsters in this field. Token launching is also an enormous... remember, this guy is walking for... There's only two guys that I know of who have been able to walk into the SEC and the CFTC, by the way, both. And sit down, talk, plan, do anything they want. It's Joseph Lubin and Sam Bankman-Fried. And Joseph... Sam Bankman-Fried is being gone after because it, it, it collapsed. Joseph Lubin is walking around with no repercussions. Activity. So whether uh, we're issuing a uh, an investor token, a security, or a consumer utility token, um, that is growing into a big business, and, and we uh, have a lot the, of activity. How's the contribution of that part of the business change? I imagine that was enormous in terms of, say, the percent of revenue, the percent of profit, maybe six months to 12 months ago. But yeah. as we see what's happening in the overall market right now, is that becoming a risk to your business? No, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity for us. Um, Even with um, these tokens crashing 80, 90 percent? Oh, uh, we're not so worried about uh, pullbacks like that. Um, <laughs> wow. I'm not going to play the rest of that because I want to show you this, too. Remember when Gary Gensler came out and did his whole staking it was so hilarious stake not not s-t-e-a-k but s-t-a-k-e ah well so what i did is i took uh joseph lubin's company's called consensus and i videoed the the section on consensus where they're bragging about how you can stake uh, how they're staking ethereum and they've got a service and i just put gary's commercial over the top of it i'll let i'll play part of it. i'm not gonna play the whole thing of data. Some stakers are then rewarded with new tokens. This Staking. Is, this is this web website you're looking at is not last year. It's right now. Okay. Oh, can be complicated and time consuming. Earn it can take rewards. big upfront commitments of tokens. There's also the risk that you won't get new tokens even if you stake. Thus, crypto entrepreneurs started offering what's called staking as a service no not like the steakhouse not like the steak Basically, not like the steakhouse if you transfer house. your tokens to a staking as a service provider they take control possibly pulling your token stake eth your way with thousands or millions of others while promoting returns but here's the rub when a company or platform offers you these kinds of returns whether they call their services lending, lending. Earn, earn rewards rewards apy or earn earn optimized rewards for staking ethereum staking, staking. that relationship should come with the protections of the federal securities laws so why does gary not want to protect us from ethereum he wants to protect us from everything else but not from ethereum and remember it's Gary that says each instance is fact-based. So it's not just the Ethereum ICO, which I believe, I believe that Gary is trying to let the statute of limitations run on the Ethereum ICO. I believe it's 10 years, I think. I believe that's why he's not saying anything one way or another. I believe, but, but it's not just that. See, he, he himself said it's transaction-based and it's, it's situa it depends on the situation and all that. Well, this is a, an ongoing situation. This is an, according to him, it's an ongoing security. Now, let me give you the caveat. I'm, again, I've said it a thousand times. I don't want the SEC to go after Bitcoin, Ethereum, or anybody. I think they should create a framework that is workable and hand everybody the rules and say, here's the rules, here's what you can do, here's what you can't do, and then have them go out and either break the law or not break the law. If they break the law, go after them. Okay? <laughs> That's... That's, that's how a, a country that's trying to attract business and attract um, talent and everything else would, would behave, but not these people. Now, Jeremy Hogan pointed out another extremely important clip from the, um, remember when the judge in the Ripple case said that the SEC did not have a faithful allegiance to the law? Well, listen to this. And so nothing any court would say would change your mind on that. Here's the, the chairman of the freaking SEC saying that it doesn't matter what any judge rules. He still is going to keep doing what he wants to do. I wish something a court could say 
which would actually um, bring the compliance <laughs> sooner. I'm telling you, that guy is damaged. That guy right there needs to be put out to pasture. And well, he needs to be he needs to be prosecuted, but I don't know if our country's lost at this point because I can't see Congress doing anything to anybody except sending letters. But Jeremy Hogan says, Chair Gibson, the crypto space is full of hucksters and non-compliance. Would, any, would anything a court says change your mind? Gensler, well, no, not really. You can't make this stuff up. He's right. Stephen Narioff has, uh, is directly over the target. Look at this. He retweeted Jeremy Hogan's thing, and he says, the SEC is a tactical unit of the establishment. Courts or an effective weapon as time alone defeats the target entity and freezes the market while other parts of the government work to co-opt the industry. Ultimately, this isn't a war. This is, I mean, he does he nail it here or what? This, is, this isn't a war against crypto. Crypto is the prize. And I retweeted him and I said, we have a winner. They don't want to kill crypto. Gary was sent to destroy the upstarts and hand the industry to Wall Street. And, and another great, this is from Stephen Narioff too. He says, you can always spot the pioneers by the arrows in their backs. Because John Deaton had retweeted a Stephen Narioff tweet. Stephen Narioff was there when Bitcoin was, one Bitcoin was 30 cents. Good for him. Um... Then uh, John Deaton uh, had a good tweet here. Why did, why did I bring Caitlin Long and highlight the Custodia Bank's lawsuit against the Federal Reserve Board of Governors? If the incumbents destroy the on-off ramps, game over. I'm at Mainnet listening to Jeremy Allaire be interviewed by two, by, this is Ryan Selkis, and Jeremy said 5,000 companies were debanked within seven days. This is why I continue to say that Custodia Bank's case in many ways is the most important. And finally, this is from uh, this is from Tom Emmer here. The first anti-CBDC bill in the United States passed out of Financial Services Committee today. A historic step in defending against ever-expanding government sur surveillance state. I, su I totally support that. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family. All this country needs is a very good dose of freedom. We don't need these people that are attacking American citizens and attacking American businesses. We need people in place that are attracting them and working with them to make this country what it was and what it should be and what it could be. Thanks for listening.